Hello everybody, Dominomial here, and welcome to a surprise LP. Honestly, I didn't expect to be playing this game, but I just randomly discovered it. It was on sale for like 40% off, and I really love space. It's one of my favorite things. <laughs> uh... Yeah. I'm not sure when this LP is going to come out. I'm recording this as of July. <laughs> the 21st of July. This might be coming out immediately, or this might be coming out near the end of the year. Who knows? I've been really busy lately, but I did want to play this game, and I wanted to record my blind reactions, so let's go. Oh, after it loads. Wake up? Oh. Okay, the button layouts are swapped. Whatever, I can deal with this. Wait. Oh. What planet is that? Hello. Oh. Wow, this is the gameplay that I came for this game for. What do you have to say? What voice do I give you? That's a pilot, back from pre-launch campout under the stars, I see. So it's launch day, eh? Seems like only yesterday you joined the space program, and suddenly here you are, leaving on your first solo voyage. What do you say? Ready to get this beauty off the ground? It's all fueled up and ready to go. Uh, you're sure you fixed the retro rockets? That was only one, one. That was only a problem one time, and then maybe a few times after that. But hey, no reason to dwell on the past, right? Anyway, you'll need to get the launch codes from Hornfels at the observatory before you can lift off. Just bring those here once you've said your goodbyes or whatever. Wow. Uh. Okay. I guess let's go. I... <laughs> this game does look very pretty. Like, it is kind of a bit more low-poly than, like, the AAA games. I mean, is this AAA? This is Annapurna? I don't know if Annapurna's a AAA company. Maybe? I mean, I don't know. It definitely doesn't have a AAA budget. But even despite that, it looks really good. Space. Hello. Hey, it's you! Slate said you're blasting off in your ship today. I'm really excited to see the launch. Aren't you gonna go into space, aren't you? You better not have changed your mind. <laughs> hey, I'm still going. You better be. It's been forever since anyone launched into space. I really, really want to see it. Really bad. Hey, you wanna try out my model ship? Slate says it's just like the real thing, only less likely to start a fire. Okay. Oh, uh, fly model ship. Oh! <laughs> okay. I, uh... Okay. Hmm. I have a feeling that I will not understand how this works. Yes. So, I just gotta... Okay, okay, okay. So the right joystick is... The... The yaw? The uh, Whatever the fuck the terms are for piloting? 
No, the right joystick is the roll. The left joystick is... Is the left joystick the roll and the right joystick the pitch? And then the left... I, I don't get it. Uh, yeah, we're gonna have a great time flying this ship in the real thing. Holy shit, that's a huge sun. God, how is everything not fucking burning alive on this planet? I guess maybe it doesn't have an ozone layer, so it's not retaining the heat. It just has the heat from the sun. I don't know. So, I guess we go to the observatory, but I just kind of want to chill out and hang out with the soon NPCs. Talk to Nice! Hello there, Space Cadet. I hear you're leaving the crater today. If you meet any other travelers up there, remind them to take proper care of their instruments, won't you? Uh... Tell me about the travelers' instruments. Oh, sure. I made all of their instruments, you know? Let me see. There's Chertz, drums, Rybex, banjo, and... Oh, there's Chertz, drums, Rybex, banjo, and Gabro's flute. And Feldspar's harmonica, of course. Though Feldspar's been missing for a long time. Sometimes it feels like just yesterday they were playing their harmonica around the campfire. Anyway, you hear music in space. That'll be one of the space program's other travelers. If you feel like company, you can always pull out your signal scope and track them down. What? Wow! Days go by really quickly! Holy shit! How fast is this planet orbiting? It's not the star that's small. I mean, the star could be small, but this planet is just on a really fast orbit. Or wait, no, 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 not fast orbit, it just has an extremely fast rotation. That's what's going on. So, it's launch day, huh? How's going to miss you? Speaking of launch day, I was thinking about it in the platform the ship's launch room is getting old. Isn't it about time you build a new, less flammable one? The big tree in the village would be the perfect choice. I wouldn't mind helping out the space program, just say the word. Uh, nice try. We all know you have it out for that tree. What? No, I just think it's in the way and someone ought to chop it down, you know? Specifically me. <laughs> you think this has to do with the time I fell out of it and broke my arm? That was when we were hatchlings. Who would hold a grudge for that long? Use the satellite camera. The projector is linked to our Sky Shutter satellite, which is currently orbiting Timber Hearth. The satellite is equipped with two onboard cameras. See if you can take a snapshot of our village. Oh. Hmm. Yeah, that is a really fast rotation. Okay. What's over here? Just exploring. Oh, wow, I didn't expect vibration. Okay, I guess let's go to the observatory. I don't really have much to say right now, because I'm just immersed in the game. <laughs> this is one of those few games where I actually have all the lights turned off in my room, because... I mean, look at that. Look at that. Hello, astronaut! <laughs> Hello, astronaut! Why, if it isn't my favorite troublemaker... We wanted to play hide-and-seek, but Moraine wouldn't, won't let us borrow their signal scope, because it's really delicate, not supposed to be thrown around like that. Hey, hey, can you reuse your sight signal scope? Can we? Can we please? We'll even let you be it. 
it. Oh, sure. Woohoo! Okay, here are the rules. J Jelena? Galena? Jelena and me will hide with these radios, and you'll use your signal scope to find us. Last one to be found wins. Okay, close your eyes and start counting. Okay, I guess I'm... Where are you? That's as far as possible. Hmm, how do I jump up there? I know you're up there. I guess I go from a higher place. Hmm. Uh, of course the first mission is playing hide and seek with kids. Hello. Fish and rhyme, fish and rhyme. Singing helps me pass the time. You're leaving the crater. Guess we'll all be a little busier without you around to lend a hand. The big water planet. Giants deep. That's where I'd go. Why's that? One time after the rest of the village had left to sleep, it was just the two of us, sitting around the campfire. Gabbro told me about their first trip to Giant's Deep. They landed their ship easily enough in the waves, but couldn't see too far down on the account of how murky the water was. I guess too dark. Gabbro wants to see what lay beneath the surface, so they decided to travel deeper. They traveled down and down, but suddenly Gabbro couldn't go any further. Tell me more. I will. I was just pausing dramatically. As though exercising a will of its own, the water was refusing to let Gabbro go any deeper. It held Gabbro back, almost as if it were trying to protect them from something. And then, in the terrible darkness, Gabbro saw it. The tentacle of some hideous beast. Uh, is that all true? Heard it from Gabbro himself. Gabbro can be a little fanciful, sure, but they aren't a liar. I mean, probably, anyway. I guess if you want to know if the story's entirely true, you can go see Giants Deep for yourself. Hello. Wow, you, th that's all you had to say? You found me! Hmm... So it's in that direction. Okay. So... I guess I'll just go over there? Oh, behind the waterfall, of course. Okay, how do I get... Oh, I get there through here. You got me, but I'm the last one. I win. Promise you play again when you get back from space. Okay, you gotta... Sorry, I can't hear you over this waterfall. Okay, whatever, let's go. That water looks like slime. <laughs> How viscous is that water? Whatever. Oh my god. Are we? No, the planets aren't quite aligning yet. Does something happen if the planets align? I mean, I had to wonder how the physics of this solar system works. Like, maybe it's just like a bunch of small planetoids, or maybe time is sped up for, you know, exaggerated purposes of actually seeing the rotation of the planets. Well, 
Or maybe we're all just very, very small creatures living on very small rocks, but appear to be very big. But then what would be the sun, then? I guess maybe like a brown, a brown dwarf or something? Ooh, launch scout. Oh! Wait, what? <laughs> That's... Okay, so I can just send the scout anywhere. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, I I don't... Oh, and I can rotate the camera view? Oh, oh already landed. Okay. Okay, that was cool. North. Young Bark Crater. Oh, so you can throw the scout to... Okay. Geyser Mountains. Quantum Grove Crater. No My Ruins. Okay. Well, I can't really do much with that if I can't travel. Hi, Astronaut. You know the patch of ghost matter inside this fence? Gonson said it used to be bigger when they were hatchling, because ghost matter evaporates. It just takes a super long time to go away. I hope there's still ghost matter in the village when I'm a grown-up. Ghost matter is awesome. Uh, you know ghost matter is how Tektite lost their foot, right? Whoa, really? That is so cool. Is that... Oh god, oh god, oh... Oh. Oh. Oh! <laughs> um... <laughs> Don't touch the green stuff. Got it. Yeah! But what? Okay. Danger. Inside this fence is a pocket of ghost matter. A strange and di dangerous substance that's invisible to the naked eyes. The good news is that you can detect ghost matter with your camera. Moving through ghost matter is uniquely painful and will probably kill you. Don't complain to me if you hurt yourself fooling around. Okay, so... Oh... Yep, that's definitely a sun. Wow, and you can kind of see, like, how rough the corona is. That's cool. I think it's the corona, anyway. The surface of the sun. I think it's called the corona. It might be, like, the second layer of the sun. Like, y y you know, because, like, the sun is kind of organized like the Earth's crust, in a sense, for astronomers. There's the surface, and there's the corona, then there's, like, the deeper level, and, like... And then there's, like, the core, which is where, like, all the fucking plasma created from nuclear fusion comes from, etc., etc. As you can tell, I like space. Hey, come say hi to your old flight coach before you launch. I got zero-g training to set up if you... Uh, zero-g training? Hello. Oh, well, yeah, I thought it... I, I, thing is... Thing is, I don't know what to give these voices. <laughs> oh, yeah, I thought I might see you the, before the big launch. Never getting the better of you. Right. Uh, are you kidding? I'm a natural at this. Is that so? Funny, I seem to recall the first time you stepped on a jetpack. We had to come fish you out of a crater near the South Pole. So listen, there's a satellite, which is definitely not just a piece of broken mining equipment set up down in the Zero-G cave and in need of repairs. 
If you're looking for a little last minute zero G practice, head down and lift into the cave, or don't, so long as you're confident you can make ship repairs in space. One repaired satellite coming up. Cool, get it? To okay. Okay. Cool. Oh. Oh, this is just rocks. It, it looks like space, I guess. Sheesh, how deep are these mines? No, 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 no! I did not want to do that! Oh, oh. I'm a little gremlin folk. Cool. I mean, that's what I suspected. I just didn't know I could actually see my character model. Ooh. Yep, that's a long mine shaft. Zero G cave. Oh, okay. Oh, this is fine. This is easy. Hello. Hey, nice. Hey, nice of you to drop down. Give me the dirt. <laughs> Some fresh dirt? Not much happening down here lately. Let me think. Come to think of it, Tektite saw something crash outside of the village crater earlier. That's new and different. Uh, is anything on fire? Probably only a little. Tektite checked out the crash site with the old Firewatch scout launcher and saw smoke. So they headed over to the stamp out any leftover fires. Well, I better get to work. The ore's not going to mine itself, you know. Uh, okay. Do I actually, like, have to keep up with all these characters? I thought I was just gonna go to space. Zero G. Okay. So I do have a limited amount of fuel. Oh. Please. Nope, nope. Do I need to, like, crab hand it? Okay, whatever. For some reason, the left click was not working quite how I thought. Okay. Oh, no, 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 no. Nope. Oh, I just need to hold the repair. Hmm. Okay, where's the last one? This is a little bit finicky, but uh, I guess it makes sense. We are in space. T space, air quotes. Okay. That seems to be everything. And... Did my flashlight run out? Yeah, whatever. No, 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 no. Just want to get out of here. Yep. Okay. Done with this. Fun little tutorial, I guess. Oh, God. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. I got it.
Uh, so are we ready to go out into space? Nicely done. Of course, it, it'll be a little more stressful when you're hurtling through space. But just remember, training and try not to hit anything big. I can see you're itching to get off this rock, so go get the launch codes from the observatory and get out of here already. Best of luck out there, and hey, try to avoid getting yourself killed now that I put it so much time into training you. Got it? That's a bit morbid, but whatever. Is the observatory this way? Probably. Uh, avoid the ghost matter. I f is the ghost matter just dark matter? Well, no. I mean, it could be a representation of dark matter, but, you know. Where do I go? Oh, I guess I... No, but where, where do I go? Oh, there's the observatory. It's down that way. Sheesh, that sun is fucking massive. How does one not immediately get blinded? Uh, it, hello? Where do I... Where do I... Oh, there's the observatory. I was overthinking it. Hello. Hey, hey, it's my favorite astronaut. Launch day at last, huh, buddy? It's the Translator's Tools inaugural flight, too. I'm so excited, it's making me nauseous. Just think, you'll be able to translate any now no no nah. any no my text uh, is that is that similar to the Zonai from Tears of the Kingdom? You'll be able to translate any no my text you want, anywhere you are. The two of us put a lot of hours into inventing that tool, so don't break it, okay? <laughs> oh jeez, do not break it. Uh ignore me, okay? I'm just nervous and I'm not even the one going in space. How are you feeling? I'm excited. Good, you've only been waiting for this day since we were hatchlings. I can't wait to see all your training pay off. So, what's the dirt? You here to see this new Znomai statue? Uh, Just here for the launch codes. Yeah, I get that you're dying to head out into space, but seriously, you've got to see the statue before you go. It's an amazing find. Makes me wish we could check a, what a real live Nomai looks like, but I guess this is as close as we'll ever get. Check it out. Looks like they had fur. Fur is weird. This is the first fully intact statue ever found, you know. And for how old it is, it's in great shape. Ah, oh, jeez. I got a little carried away there. Go on. You have a ship to launch. Take care of yourself out there. You hear? What? Are? What? The remarkably intact statue was carved by the Nomai an ancient species who dwelled in our solar system thousands of years ago. The statue provides us with our most detailed look yet at the Nomai, who appear to have been covered with a layer of fur. Note the decorative jewelry that has been carved as part of the antlers. Although their artifacts and structures have been found on almost every planet in this solar system, we still have no idea where this species came from or what happened to them. Ah, the search for extra... Is Extraterrestrial intelligence. Or SETI. Hornfels. Uh, Feldspar Esker Slate. Outer Wilds Ventures founding members. Clockwise from top left. Hornfels, Gossen, Slate, and Feldspar. Outer Wilds Ventures, Timber Hearth's first and only space program, was founded to explore the farthest reaches of our solar system. Feldspar was the first Harthian to be intentionally launched into space. They completed the first orbit around Timber Hearth and later made the first of what would be many landings on our moon, the Atler Rock. Whoa! 
Oh my god. Is that Funky Kong's airplane from Donkey Kong Country? Nah, it's just a satellite. The radio tower here on Timber Hearth was built to receive transmissions from our deep space satellite, and to this day still houses the first ever photos taken of the entire solar system. These photos were made possible by the deep space satellite's unusual vertical orbit that carries it high above and below the plane of our solar system. Holy shit! Oh man. Thanks to a recent upgrade, the Deep Space Satellite is now responsible for generating the real-time solar system map used by our newest astronauts. Oh! What are these planets? Stars like our sun generate light and heat by fusing hydrogen into helium. Yes. Yes. But they can also fuse helium beyond helium. And by that, like, if you've ever taken chemistry and you'll know, like, the elements are determined by the amount of protons, neutrons, and electrons in a molecule. And so through nuclear fusion, all those atoms or molecules, or, yeah, atoms slash molecules collide at really rapid speeds. And normally you can't combine atoms just through brute force, but through nuclear fusion, with how fast the particles are moving, they combine through brute force, and hydrogen gets turned into helium, and then helium keep going, go, keeps going up and up and up the ladder, depending on how big and luminous the star is. So, like, if it's a smaller star, it's not going to combine that much hydrogen and helium, but if it's a really fucking big, massive blue star, which are basically extinct now because of how short lot how short-lived their lifespans are. Um, they can actually combine uh, particles up to iron. They cannot combine past iron, because iron is just too big to move around that quickly to combine it any further. And so when a star eventually accumulates a lot of iron and can't fuse anymore, it loses its heat, it dies... Um, fuck, I'm trying to remember the exact process. But yeah, it loses its heat over time, it cools down, and, uh, it, I, I guess it becomes kind of like a, uh, it becomes a white dwarf, because, like, its exterior completely dissipates because it's not producing any plasma, and so what's left is just the core of the star, like all the iron or whatever that was fucking fused in the center without an ex exterior, and it's just a hot ball. <laughs> a really fucking hot ball. So, yeah. Uh, although, depending on how big the star is and how rapidly it fuses, or whether or not it's like near like another star. There is a possibility that it could also turn into a black hole or a neutron star. And a neutron star could just turn into a black hole or just fucking create a supernova in space. Uh, but that depends on, like, the ion, like, the ion type of whether or not, like, uh, it has, like, a lot of molecules that are ionized. A.K.A. A radioactive. Radioactive materials. <laughs> As it grows older, the star runs out of hydrogen and starts to contract. See exactly. As the star's core contracts, it gets hotter, causing the outer layers to expand. Right, right, that's what happens. It becomes a supergiant burst. It becomes a fucking supergiant. So if you have, like, a... If you have, like, say, a normal star like our sun, the average, completely average sun... It'll contract first, but then it'll heat up, and then it, it's basically deathbed in its last dying breath. It'll expand to a supergiant. But because all the materials are expanded out further, it's not quite as condensed as it was. 
it'll still be hot. Um, but its luminosity will go down. So if the star is yellow, it'll turn red. So in the sun's dying breath, which will be like the last hundred thousand, several, pro like still probably, yeah, no, it's probably several hundred thousand years of its end of its lifespan. It'll turn into a red giant. So it, yeah, imagine seeing a fucking red sun. That would be cool as fuck. But we'll all be dead by then and we wouldn't be able to survive the climate change that would occur. <laughs> When the core is hot enough, it starts to fuse helium into carbon. Yes, it will. Yeah, that is true. If a star is massive enough, it will continue to fuse carbon into even heavier elements, like iron. Ultimately, the star will collapse under its own gravity and then explode in a violent event called a supernova. So I got the general star lifespan gist correct. It's been a few years since I took astronomy class. But I'm glad I still remember all of that. Based on Shirt's observations, this will one day be the fate of our own sun. It'll be the fate of every single sun. But that's just how the universe works. Without stars exploding, more planets can't exist. More planets can't be created, different stars can't be created, so the stars do have to explode if the universe goes on. The crystal was taken from a Nomai ruin on Brittle Hollow. It seems to create a local gravity distortion and was most likely used to traverse steep surfaces. Try it out. Oh. Oh. That is... Funky. Okay. Okay, that's... Interesting. Look at that. The Nomai technology brought back from space by our astronauts has been a great boon to Outer Wilds Ventures, allowing us to modify expedition gear in exciting and useful ways. For example, the little scout now boasts a warp retrieval capability that allows astronauts to recall their scouts almost instantly. This has dramatically reduced the number of scouts lost to the depths of space. Cool. Lore for game mechanics. That's cool. When you see... What you see here are parts of the Nomai skeleton. We can tell from their skulls that they possessed antlers and quite unusually only three eyes. The Nomai body was most likely adapted for living exclusively on land. The differences in the Nomai's anatomy, such as their shockingly fragile bone structure, show us that Harthians couldn't have descended from Nom Nom Nomayan ancestors. It's not clear where the Nomai originated from or why they disappeared. We hope to find more clues to this puzzle as we explore our solar system. Wow. What are you? Aside from the dwellings and structures they built, the Nomai also made art. This decorated pottery was discovered on Brittle Hollow. Some ancient Nomai art depicts strange animals, foreign celestial objects, and other objects that can't be found in our solar system. Which makes us wonder whether the Nomais originated somewhere else in the universe, or simply had vibrant imaginations. Were the Nomai born in our solar system, or were they born among the other stars and planets? If they were, how and why did they come here? These are just some of the questions we hope to answer through further Xenoarchaeological expeditions. What? Oh. We're nearly ready. Felix and I have finished construction, and she says calibrating the device won't take long. Fortunately, the Atler Rock's lack of atmosphere will make calibration simple. After all, this time I'm thrilled to finally resume our search. <laughs> so the language is just fucking Fibonacci sequences? What are you? This piece of Nomai writing was essential to deciphering their unique language. Although this text is linear, Nomai often 
Nomai text often branches off from a central point, interestingly. Each branch tends to be written by a different author. Oh. But... Oh, wow! So... It's like looking at, like, fucking... Fuck. What are those fucking diagrams in fucking biology that depict, like, the uh, proteins? Or, like, the lipids? It's like looking at, like, protein structures. Maybe that's what it's supposed to... I mean, I, I think I might just be overanalyzing it. And then I don't know what the fuck this is. Maybe it's like a watermark. <laughs> a copyright symbol. Yeah. I guess it's time to go upstairs. This is like viewing an actual, like, space museum. Well, I mean, within a video game, but yeah. Man, I should go to a space museum one of these days. Holy shit! Brittle Hollow, Giant's Deep, The Hourglass Twins, Dark Bramble. So... It's... Only has five planets and a sun. But I think Brittle's Hollow has like fucking like 15 orbitals from what I can see. Holy shit. Oh, Brittle Hollow and Hollow's Lantern. So the orbital is Hollow's Lantern and then Brittle Hollow has... Weird. There's got to be an explanation for how that one works. That's unusual. Dark Bramble. Those are some very tall trees. I don't think trees can grow in space, but who am I to say anything? Uh, what? What's that there? There's something near the sun. I guess I'll figure that out sometime. Giant's Deep. That looks like a stormy planet, if I'm going to be honest. Kind of like how Jupiter is just one massive fucking storm on its surface. And then what the hell is that? Oh. No, no. I don't know. That's interesting. There you are. I just finished pre-flight observations, and local conditions are good. Time to get our newest astronaut off the ground. And you'll be our first astronaut ever equipped with a Nomai translator to. I confess, I've been giddy all day just thinking about it. We better e we're better equipped than ever to unravel the mysteries of the Nomai. You and Hal should be very proud of your work. Tell me, what's your plan once you're in space? Uh... I want to go somewhere no one's gone before. I like it. You'll have plenty of options to choose from. No one's ever landed on the interloper before, you know. Perhaps you'll be first. I must say, should you choose to go to Dark Bramble, be very careful. No one's explored there before either, for what you'll find are excellent reasons. Well then, looks like all that's left is to send you off. All in all, it's a fine day for a launch. I'm ready to die in space. I'm not one for superstition, but isn't that kind of an unlucky to say before a launch? At any rate, here are the launch codes. Try not to worry too much. Our ships are very are every bit as safe as Slate should be persuaded to make them. Best of luck out there, and let me know if I can help you with anything. The launch codes... Hmm, this is odd. According to my redshift calculations, every single galaxy in this image is moving away from us. Yes, that is true. Since the universe is expanding, it's ballooning out, literally every single thing in the universe is moving farther away from us at a constant rate. Like, not 
Well, or I guess our solar man. But like all the stars in the distance are definitely moving farther and farther out because the universe is expanding. It's cool. And the reason why we know this is because of the Doppler effect. But it it's through light. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love the Doppler effect. I, I can explain the science behind that a little bit if uh, needed. But I, I already explained the fucking lifespan of a star. In fact, the farther away the galaxy is, the faster it appears to be moving away. That's because like a balloon, if you take one point of a balloon, of the surface of a balloon, and then another point of the surface of the balloon, the farther away the two points are, the farther, the faster the distance will increase. It's almost as if the entire universe is expanding. Exactly, just as I said. But if that's true, was everything closer together in the past? And how far back can we extrapolate? Did the universe have a beginning? I mean, we have the Big Bang Theory... Not the show, but the actual theory. But uh, we can't really figure out what happened uh, prior to the first 381,000 years of the universe. Or some number like that. Because the universe wasn't... The universe was completely opaque before that time. And so the static that you see... From, like, a television, if you go on a channel that doesn't exist, that's static from the Big Bang. Th those are, like, that's literally a representation of the molecules that were bouncing around in the Big Bang when it, you know, first came to be from 381,000 years from the start of the universe. That kind of stuff. What the fuck are you doing? That's kind of creepy. No? Y you just... You just... Okay... I'll just... Ignore you... I did I- Yeah, of course I needed something kind of weird and creepy to happen... Before... Going out into space, which is the biggest fucking cosmic horror out there. Because it is fucking the cosmos. Hey, hey, so did you get a good look at that Nomai statue? <laughs> the statue looked at me and opened its eyes. Whoa, whoa, the statue was doing that? What? So its eyes opened, and then you saw a bunch of images from your own memories and glowing lights flying around. You, you mean, like, a hallucination? Listen, no offense, but are you sure you're okay to launch, like, medically speaking? Uh, no, that statue is definitely weird. I mean, if you're saying it happened, then I guess maybe it did, but why? Hornfels tried everything to get the statue's eyes to open, and nothing like this ever happened to them. I don't think you're going to get any answers from the museum statue, but Gabro said they were going back to Giant's Deep. Don't know which island they're on, though. Maybe they'd be able to tell you more. On the other hand, Gabro's, you know, Gabro. So maybe you'd be better off searching for more info on your own. Jeez, now I'm really jealous you're going into space. Hey, see if you can use our translator tool to find out more about the statue, okay? Good luck and safe flying. Okay. So where do we launch? Where are we launching? Hello, astronaut. Are you going into space today? Are you going into space and never coming back like Feldspar did? <laughs> That's pretty disturbing. But Hornfeld says no one knows what happened to Feldspar. Hornfeld says they got lost in space even though they were the best pilot ever. You're not as good as Feldspar, so you should be careful not to get lost. Fuck you. Kids are ruthless. Okay, but 
where do I launch? Oh! Uh... You know what? I'm gonna do something a bit evil here. That... This was the first episode of Outer Wilds. I am really fucking invested in this game already. I know I say that with, like, almost any story-based game, but I just like the atmosphere and space. <laughs> In the next episode. See you then. Bye-bye.